We have uh, uh, Flavio Del Santo, uh, he has got uh, a special man, he was uh, participated in the competition, the Sister Best Paper Prize. He was not the winner, but he, the commission suggested a special mention because of the quality of his uh, work. And he's uh, quite young, uh, a few years younger, I think, than, uh, <laughs> than Alexander. So this was um, uh, a way to, to but I suggested that the Commission to recognize the, the quality of the, of the work. So he will talk uh, about Carl Popper's contribution to the foundation of quantum mechanics. 15 minutes, I will uh, show you the five minutes. No. So, thank you very much. Thank you very much for the kind introduction. It's really an honor for me to receive this uh, recognition, also because my my work is, uh, is uh, in physics, actually, and, and, and the history of physics has always been a passion, but uh, the side feels to me. And I'm almost self-taught in, in uh, history of physics. I say almost because uh, I should mention that Angelo Baracca, who's not here, it has been, uh, he led me to this path, so uh, uh, a big recognition I, I want, to, I want to, to give to him. Let me go in the, in the um, subject of the, of the talk today. Uh, which is part of a, of a research program that I've been conducting the last uh, three years now. Uh, thanks to the, um, a lot of, of um, unpublished material that I uh, could retrieve in Popper's archive in Klagenfurt in, in the south of Austria. And uh, since my, my main research interest uh, is, is uh, foundations of quantum mechanics, I've, I've tried to, to look at what Karl Popper did and surprisingly it did a lot into the foundations of quantum mechanics. So I, I'm also interested in seeing from the sociological viewpoint how actually Karl Popper managed to enter the, the, the circles of influence of physicists for, in several periods of his long and, and distinguished career. So, so this is the paper for which I got the special mention, but I also wanted to introduce you to a, a new, some new results together with it, with it in, in, this, in this project. So uh, I started going backwards from the 80s contributions and now I will show something from, from the 50s and 60s. Let me start by, by this quotation, reading this quotation uh, by, Bartley, by William Bartley III, a pupil of, of Popper, who uh, was the, the um, his main collaborator in the works for, for, uh, in, in uh, quantum physics. And he writes in 1978, in fact, the physicists have for the most time simply ignored Popper. Among the many highly distinguished contributor, contributor to Schilt volume, Schilt, the, the, the Library of Living Philosophers, the, the very distinguished uh, series of, of books on, on living philosophers, there is, for example, only one physicist of even moderate distinction, Henri Magenau. There could be no more serious editorial defect in Schild volume. It is, it is as if Einstein volume of the series were published without critical reference to relativity theory, or the Russell volume without reference to the mathematical logic. Where is John Bell, John Clauser, John Wheeler? They certainly know of Popper's work. Where well, then Heisenberg, Eckhart Gödel, Louis de Broglie, uh, Eugene Wigner, asked to contribute? For what matter? Where are Jean-Pierre Vigier, Alfred Landé, and David Bohm, who tend to agree with Popper's critique of of quantum mechanics. The lack of a sustained critical interaction between Popper and the majority of physicists is a loss not only to, to theory, but also to culture. So what I've tried to show here in my research is that, uh, that this is actually part of the truth. So it's true that, that Popper was, was mainly ignored by, by physicists, but there are several good exceptions. Um, I try to, to formulate this in, in, a, in a loosey way in the framework of, of uh, um, Ludwig Fleck and the concept of ten collectif, so thought, thought collectives, uh, that are the, the community of, of, of persons mutually exchanging ideas or maintaining intellectual interaction. And I show that Popper, uh, being one very, very, very influential member of a then collective of philosophers, he manages at some point during the 50s to, to access one uh, collective of these dissidents of quantum mechanics. Um, so this is the main, uh, just to give you an overview of his, of his work, this is the, the main three moments of, of 
Popper's career when he contributed to, to, to quantum physics. Uh, 1934, when uh, the Logik der Forschung, uh, this uh, logical scientific discovery first edition was published, uh, where he thoroughly analyzed uh, Heisenberg's relations, uh, uh, asserted his relations, and tried to falsify them. Um, what, what turns out, I mean, I will talk, I will talk about this in, in a moment. Uh, after that, there are two um, less, less important uh, for, for the impact on, on the Den Collective, but still very important for, for the contents of his theories. There, there is the, the end of, of 40s and beginning of, of, of 50s when he develops uh, new critiques of, of um, uh, indeterminism and the propensity interpretation of probability. It, whereas in the 1960s, he publishes two very influential papers in, in, in this community of, of quantum physics, at, at least. Quantum Mechanics Without the Observer, which is a, a, a critique, strong critique of Copenhagen interpretation. And he tries to, to demolish an argument, a mathematical argument given by Birkhoff and von Neumann in 1936, of, on the, when they created basically the quantum, so called quantum logic. And in the 80s he came back, when, so already over 80 because he was, he was uh, born in 1902, but in the 80s uh, he starting, uh, started doing again uh, theoretical physics and, and uh, proposed new experiments that were very important uh, on, on the Italian uh, milieu since uh, um, basically Celery in Bari was the one who, who gave the most uh, Created to this experiment and try to find some experimentalists to realize this. So this is just an overview of some of the people with whom Popper had uh, actual uh, uh, the main intellectual uh, relations uh, among the physicists. You see, there are the, all the main names of, quantum, of the origin of quantum mechanics uh, and uh, some of the dissidents after the 50s. So starting in 1934, very quickly, the, he proposed an experiment uh, to, um, to disprove uh, that, that it told you uh, Heisenberg's certain relations. And uh, it turned out, I mean, he, he was invited in Copenhagen to present this before uh, Bohr, Heisenberg, and, and Einstein, and they all found, and von Weizsäcker, and they all found that there was a flow, basically, in, in, in current terminology, it violates uh, um, uh, no signal theorem. Um, but this may open his, uh, his first uh, uh, interaction with, with important physicists in, in the quantum theory. And, but then it, it, it was also a traumatic experience for him since he developed this uh, obviously eventually faulty experiment. He would remember this many years later in his uh, autobiography. This was a gross mistake for which I have been deeply sorry and ashamed ever since. And this prevented, in fact, to do, to do physics for another 10 years. And it is only in, the, in 1948 so that, encouraged by, by some friends, and particularly by, by Schrödinger and, and by Arthur Mach, a physicist from Innsbruck, uh, <clears throat> that he came back on the problem of quantum theory. Uh, in particular, he starts the, um, addressing the problem of indeterminism in classical and quantum physics. Uh, sustaining and supporting the fact that, that uh, physics is uh, intrinsically not deterministic, including uh, um, classical physics, and gives talks about this also, again, before Einstein and Bohr in Princeton in 1950, and uh, his, first his first published article is in uh, 1951 on this subject. At the same time, he starts thinking about a new interpretation of probability, the current interpretation of probability that will become important in his later works. However, we have to stress that all of this happened within the then collective of philosophers only. Main, namely, the journals where he was submitting his, his work, his main interlocutors, they were all um, uh, philosophers. And physicists was just, for physicists it was just um, uh, proper in these years as a reference point for physicists to have uh, some inclination towards philosophy, so uh, the, for instance, Hermann Bondi or, or uh, the, the very same Bohm, uh, they actually um, address Popper trying to, to get published into, into philosophy journals and to enter, but 
So it is more that he's an, an attractor for physicists with the with the philosophical prohibitions more than he trying to, to go into a then collective of, of physicists. Things are changing during the 1950s thanks to uh, Bon de Bon and Day, good friends and, and prominent physicists, and Mario Bunker and Wolfgang Jürgau, uh, who would promote actually Popper's work among physicists and try to, to, to engage him uh, into debate. So they, uh, they found a new, new journalist like uh, uh, Fundamenta Scienze, um, and they include him uh, as, a, as a, um, an editor, a co editor of the, of the journal, together with prominent physicists. And so his, his uh, uh, Popper's uh, engagement into, into the, the then collective of quantum physics becomes more and more prominent in the, in the 60s, and it reaches a peak when in 1967 when he publishes uh, a, a paper um, um, entitled Quantum Mechanics Without Observer, where he tries to, to dismiss Copenhagen interpretation in 13 pieces. And I quote some of, of, of his uh, main points. So, uh, so his main point is open, he opens the paper saying, I want to exercise the ghost called the consciousness or the observer from quantum mechanics. Copenhagen interpretation with complementarity is a great quantum model. And so distributions are, are, are properties of ensembles and not properties uh, of the elements of the ensembles. So he, he, he strives for, as he did before in 1934, he strives for an interpreta a statistical interpretation of quantum mechanics and not apply statistics to, to single particles. And to do this, he has to develop uh, a new interpretation, as I told you, of, of probability, which is this propensity interpretation, where propensities are an actual existing entity, uh, so basically, uh, kind of a field which is guiding the particle, and this is uh, what it actually interferes, for instance, in the doubles like experiment, is, uh, is these uh, waves of probability that are actually in, uh, and these have been later on appreciated by many physicists, uh, so it's, it's, it's strongly related to, to Bohm's interpretation, although Popper would never accept this, Bohm did it, Bohm told him at some point, hey, look, we're not so different, but we Popo was, was convinced that the bomb was completely on the, on, the, on the wrong path because of determinism, so Popo could not accept bomb's determinism. And a new result that, that I have um, recently dealt into is uh, his controversy with Feyerabend. You know that Feyerabend is a Popper and Feyerabend uh, relationship is still a, a subject of, of great debate in, in, the, in the history of of science, and I found some, some new elements very interesting because uh, it's not very well known that their main interaction was about quantum physics. So Feyerabend uh, uh, obtained his PhD in, uh, in Vienna uh, under um, Victor Kraft, the, the last survival of the Vienna Circle of Vienna, and, uh, in 1951, and just after that he moved to study under Popper's supervision for a let's say, postdoc uh, in at the London School of Economics in London um, for two years, where he actually studied only the philosophy and the interpretations of quantum mechanics. Um, in fact, the first paper ever published by Feyerabend is entitled Determinismus und Quantum Mechanik, so Determinism and Quantum Mechanics from 1954, uh, where he actually acknowledges that all these positions have been developed uh, under Popper, basically. So he, he, stroke, he strives for uh, an indeterministic interpretation of classical physics and the like. So an element of, of, of break between the two starts in, in 1956, when uh, Feyerabend, without, without informing Popper, publishes uh, on the, on the um, uh, prestigious German journal Zeitschrift für Physik, uh, a proof of the, um, of, um, so he, he tries to, to demonstrate the, the, um, a mistake into von Neumann's impossibility proof for hidden variables, so a problem that was very much discussed at the time uh, among people interested in foundations of quantum mechanics. Popper notices that the, 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 receives the preprint from, from common friends and would, would immediately write to Feynman. I have read already your new paper. I do agree, of course, with its content. Since you got the complete contents of this paper here, in my room, from Joseph Agassi and myself. 
I may remind you again of the fact that when you still believed in Neumann's proof, you were here, and we had a great fight about it. If you do not have a very full acknowledgement of Jost and myself, it would be plagiarism. And he continues the day after with another second letter, and has been really upset. I do not believe that the contents of your paper are really worth publishing. I should have never published it myself. It is, it is thus not that I think they are valuable goods, uh, goods with, that we find valuable. It is a different thing. It's a matter of principle. The goods are goods which you, which you find valuable enough to publish, and they are not your property. I should express my view that I consider a publication to be more wrong. I should have willingly agreed to have it published by you, provided you would have proceeded in the proper way. I have to do it for your own sake. Otherwise, you will never learn what one may do and do not. So there is really a... a um, I found a reading the correspondence between, between the two. Uh, there is almost a paternalistic uh, sense in, in, in Popper towards Feyerabend. Feyerabend has this uh, teenage phase when he actually uh, tries, to, tries completely to, to go against uh, uh, his uh, academic father. And in fact, uh, this, this uh, quantum mechanics without observer of 1967 of Popper is actually the protesters' um, matter for, for continuing this debate between the two. And immediately after, Feyerabend starts criticizing Popper. And he refuses completely all his previous views on quantum mechanics, so all the critiques of Copenhagen, all the, the non determinists and he starts uh, defending Bohr against Popper's attack. So the, he, writes, he writes, a publication of, of quantum theory and reality, and especially Popper's contribution to it, are taken as an occasion for restatement of Bohr's position for the refutation of some quite popular but surprisingly naive and uninformed objections against it. Bohr's position is distinguished from, both from Eisenberg, which is correct, and from the vulgarized version, which had been part of the so-called Copenhagen interpretation and whose inarticulateness has been a boon for all of these critics who prefer easy victories to irrational debate. Um, however, after, after this, he writes the popular letter that I have recently found, uh, which is very interesting because it states also why he actually uh, wrote this paper based on, probably on, on, on personal uh, jealousy, in the sense that he writes, uh, we had here, at Berkeley University in California, where he was teaching, a few students of physics who are thoroughly critical of the way in which quantum theory is being taught today, and who just managed to introduce an official course run by them, in which they want to explore the weakness of the orthodox interpretation. I gave them copies of your article, mm -hmm. Quantum Mechanics Without Observer, and I never saw such an enthusiastic response. They also asked me for my opinion, they were on my course of philosophy before, as, I, as a reply, I wrote the enclosed note, so this, this harsh critique, which I also sent to the British Journal for, for Philosophy of Science to be published in discussion there. On the reading, uh, on reading it again, I find that uh, on various occasions I have expressed myself rather harshly, but I don't think this will do any harm. Um, yeah, so there is. I don't want to go, into, there is no time to do in the details, but it's interesting to see also that the, the community of physicists, that the, there is a kind of split with the supporters of Ferrab and Popper and, and, and Bohm and, and Markenau and, and, and Lande would write harsh letters to Ferrab and to defend Popper against his uh, inaccuracy in his criticism. I come to a conclusion with the very last part of, of, of Popper's career, very, very quickly, let's skim it through it. So another, another change after the 60s, there is not much going on. Popper gets a, a bit um, uh, far away from, from physics again, but is in, again in 1980s uh, in the course of a conference where Jean-Pierre Vigier started discussing something with Popper, and Popper basically gives him an, a new idea how to implement the, uh, the possible detection of empty waves, something that the, the pupils of Deploy were working since a long time. And, and Vigier convinced, persuaded Popper to co author a paper also with, with Garuccio. And this uh, has been done in 1981. There were two papers. And Popper takes also the occasion to try to, to restate uh, a new Gedanken experiment uh, conducted against the Copenhagen interpretation, and which is uh, these are the original drawings I found, these are the, the published version of it. 
and is basically an is an EPR EPR uh, experiment with with where two leads are posed uh, at the at the same distance from the source, and Popper asks what happens if I remove those leads and if they are they have they are, they are entangled there in a momentum and position. So everyone agreed that Copenhagen interpretation, standard quantum mechanics, predicts that the the, the particle would would uh, experience a, a scattering even if one slit is removed due to the partial localization of the of the slit on the one side. Everyone agreed on this. And Popper said this is impossible. This would, would could be used to, to signal on the other side if this was the case. And so Popper says, let's do the experiment. I, I, I hope that some physicists could do this experiment. And um, so his claim is that if the particle would have gone straight and with its, its trajectory and change, this would have disproved Copenhagen interpretation. Mm -hmm. And a great deal of, uh, of, of work has been, been spent uh, on this. So all these people throughout the 80s uh, uh, wrote a lot about this, and all of them basically dismissed the proposal on uh, technical ground. They all said that this is not possible to, to, to have because at that point uh, at that point there was no spontaneous parametric down conversion as a technique to produce entangled pairs. And so it was actually a problem with the source on how to produce these entangled pairs. But no one criticized actually the proposal. Everyone was convinced that this was, if conducted, this would have been an experiment in Crochus. And eventually, after Popper's death in 1999, the experiment was realized and Popper was right. There was a, a lot of a, a lot of discussion, and I think again from the sociological point of view, it's very interesting to read the, the referee report of the experiment of Xi and Kim who did the experiment. So we sent the physical review letters, and it was rejected. Three referees, all of them said this is a violation of the uncertainty principle. It cannot be published. They said this is wrong. Basically, it's all wrong. Kim sent it to Nature. Nature also rejected and said, well, basically the referee said that they just don't like Popper's idea at all. They don't care what the, what the formulas do. They just don't like it. And it was rejected. <laughs> so the, 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 the current interpretation is, that, is actually that this was not an experiment in purpose. If, if properly calculated with Copenhagen interpretation, so from the very formalism of quantum mechanics, independent of interpretation, the particle but was straight. But, it's just interesting, really, to see that for a decade people uh, criticized Popper not actually on, on the proposal, and when it was realized and the, the outcome was considered unacceptable, only at that time people tried to, to, to run for, for, for an explanation that would be safe. And this is the last letter that Popper writes to, to Sender, just to show how motivated he still was at age 87. I'm getting extremely old, but I still have new exciting ideas in various fields. And I <laughs> Thank you very much.